Let's get started. Start with listening and then learn new words and practice them in sentences. Have you ever stopped to ponder the true essence of human rights and their impact on our daily lives? Human rights, a term we often hear, but do we truly understand its depth? They are the fundamental rights and freedoms to which all individuals are entitled, regardless of nationality, sex, ethnicity, religion, or any other status. Human rights have a rich and complex history, dating back to ancient civilizations. However, their recognition in international law is a relatively recent development. The atrocities of World War II propelled the international community to establish a universal set of rights to protect individuals from abuse. This led to the creation of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948, a landmark document that outlines the basic rights and freedoms to which all humans are entitled. Following the declaration, two significant covenants were adopted in 1966, which further elaborated on these rights. The International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights focuses on rights such as freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, and the right to a fair trial. The International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, on the other hand, addresses rights like the right to work, the right to an adequate standard of living, and the right to education. A few key terms are central to understanding human rights. They are deemed inalienable, meaning they cannot be taken away or given up. They are indivisible, indicating that all rights are equally important and cannot be isolated from one another. They are interdependent, suggesting that the fulfillment of one right often depends on the fulfillment of others. Lastly, they are interrelated, signifying that the violation of one right can affect several others. So why does this matter? Well, human rights are the bedrock of freedom, justice, and peace, providing a universal framework for equality and fairness. They guide how we interact with one another and influence the laws that govern our societies. As we delve deeper into this topic, we'll explore the many layers and complexities of human rights, shaping a nuanced understanding that goes beyond the surface. Is freedom of speech an absolute right, or should it have its boundaries? That's a question that continues to ignite debates around the globe. To truly delve into this complex issue, let's embark on a journey through the labyrinth of freedom of speech. Freedom of speech is a cornerstone of democratic societies. It empowers citizens to voice their opinions, enabling a free exchange of ideas that can drive progress and innovation. This fundamental right is enshrined in various international treaties, such as the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which states that everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. But here's the paradox. What happens when this right collides with other rights or societal values? Take hate speech, for example. While it technically falls under the umbrella of free speech, it's a form of expression that can incite violence, discrimination, or hostility against individuals or groups based on attributes like race, religion, or sexual orientation. It's a contentious issue, with some arguing that curtailing hate speech is essential to protect the rights and dignity of others, while others assert that doing so risks infringing on freedom of speech. Another conundrum arises with the spread of false information. In the digital age, Misinformation can circulate rapidly, leading to harmful consequences such as public panic, health crises, or political instability. Yet regulating such speech can be seen as a form of censorship, stirring up concerns about potential abuses of power and stifling of dissent. These case studies serve as reminders that the right to freedom of speech is not an isolated entity. It exists within a network of other rights and societal values, and conflicts can arise when these intersect. It's a delicate balance to strike, and societies grapple with where to draw the line between safeguarding freedom of speech and preventing potential harm. The debate on the extent of freedom of speech is a testament to the complexities of human rights. It reminds us that we are continually navigating a dynamic landscape, striving to uphold the principles of human rights while adapting to evolving challenges and contexts. Despite the significant progress made, why does gender equality remain an elusive goal in many parts of the world? This question underscores the paradox of our times, where we have made leaps and bounds in acknowledging the importance of gender equality, yet still grapple with systemic disparities and prejudices. Let's first take a moment to recognize the strides made so far. Over the past few decades, we have seen a seismic shift in attitudes towards gender roles and rights. Women have broken barriers in politics, business, and science, proving that they are just as capable and deserving of opportunities as their male counterparts. International treaties like the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, or CEDAW, 
have played a crucial role in this progress. By setting global standards for women's rights and holding countries accountable, CEDAW has catalyzed significant policy changes and societal transformations. However, this progress is not uniform, and many challenges persist. For instance, the wage gap remains a stubborn reality in many economies, with women often earning significantly less than men for the same work. Discrimination is still rampant, both subtle and overt, making it harder for women to rise to positions of power. Violence against women, particularly domestic violence, is a pervasive and deep-seated issue that is often overlooked or downplayed. Moreover, it's important to remember that gender equality is not just about women's rights. It's about ensuring that all genders, including those who identify as non-binary or transgender, are treated with dignity and respect. These communities often face unique and intensified forms of discrimination that require targeted interventions. So, while we have come a long way in the fight for gender equality, we still have a long road ahead. It's going to take continuous effort, unwavering commitment, and concerted action from all sectors of society to truly level the playing field. Achieving gender equality requires continuous effort and commitment from all sectors of society. We must keep pushing, keep challenging, and keep striving for a world where every individual can thrive, regardless of their gender. In an era where data is the new oil, how can we safeguard our right to privacy? This question brings us to our next topic, the right to privacy in the digital age. The right to privacy is a cornerstone of human dignity. It allows us to keep our thoughts, personal life, and information safe from public scrutiny and unwarranted interference. It is a fundamental human right, recognized in international law and various constitutions around the globe. However, the advent of technology and the rise of the digital age have posed significant challenges to this right. Every day, individuals generate an unimaginable amount of data, from the websites we visit to the purchases we make online. This data, often referred to as digital footprints, can reveal intimate details about our lives. Let's take a moment to consider the case of data breaches. Imagine a scenario where a massive corporation, let's call it Corporation X, suffers a data breach. Millions of people's personal information, including credit card details and home addresses, are leaked onto the Internet. This is a clear infringement on the right to privacy. Moreover, surveillance, both by governments and corporations, has become a pressing concern. For instance, certain social media platforms are known to track user activity even when the user is not logged into the platform. This information is then used to target advertising, altering the user's online experience based on their personal data. These examples illustrate the delicate balance between privacy, security, and convenience. On one hand, we enjoy the convenience that technology brings. On the other hand, we must be wary of how our data is used and who has access to it. The challenge lies in creating robust legal frameworks and ethical guidelines to regulate data collection and use, ensuring that our right to privacy is not compromised. This is an ongoing debate filled with complex questions that need careful consideration. The right to privacy is a fundamental human right that must be protected even in the face of rapid technological advancements. As we navigate the digital landscape, let's remember to advocate for our right to privacy and stay informed about how our data is used. Let's learn new words and practice English at level C2. Inalienable. Inalienable, unable to be taken away from or given away by the possessor. Example, human rights are often described as inalienable, fundamental rights to which a person is inherently entitled simply because she or he is a human being. Universalism. Universalism, the belief in or advocacy for the universal applicability of the principles of human rights, without regard to culture or context. Example, the debate over universalism versus cultural relativism is central in international human rights discussions. Impunity. Impunity, exemption from punishment or freedom from the injurious consequences of an action. Example, the fight against impunity for human rights violations remains a significant global challenge. Sanctions Sanctions, actions taken by countries against others to force compliance with international law or other obligations, including those related to human rights. 
Example, international sanctions are often debated as tools to enforce human rights standards in regimes that violate them. Asylum Asylum, the protection granted by a nation to foreign citizens, allowing them to remain within that nation's borders, free from persecution on grounds such as race, religion, or political beliefs. Example, asylum remains a critical human right for individuals fleeing persecution and conflict. Genocide Genocide, the deliberate killing of a large group of people, especially those of a particular ethnic group or nation, with the intent to destroy that group. Example, preventing genocide is a fundamental goal of international human rights law. Marginalization Marginalization, the process whereby something or someone is pushed to the edge of a group and accorded lesser importance. Example, the marginalization of certain communities is a frequent subject of human rights advocacy. Advocacy Advocacy, the act or process of supporting a cause or proposal. Example, advocacy for human rights is crucial in bringing attention to abuses and pushing for legislative change. Reparation Reparation, the making of amends for a wrong one has done, by providing payment or other assistance to those who have been wronged. Example, reparations are often discussed as necessary measures to address historical injustices and human rights violations.